The capital city saw some hard hit areas from that storm down trees, power lines and even damage at the governor's mansion. Yeah, 16 WAPT's Kara Peters takes a look for us. Howling winds, heavy rain plummeting through the capital city. Residents choosing to take precautions for the weather earlier in the day. How many bags are you filling up today? Five. The way the weather is, you never can tell. You never can tell about this Mississippi weather. One major report of damage. At the governor's mansion, a massive tree coming down, bringing bricks and part of the security gate down with it. Crews working to break the tree up in pieces and clear the portions of Capitol and West Street. What was going through your mind? Uh, I hope tornado doesn't hit. You know, that was the main thing. But it did. A tornado confirmed Wednesday afternoon. One business owner near High Street watching it all right outside his building. Heard a lot of thundering going on and the wind was really gushing and blowing really hard. And so uh, I could hear it hitting the wind as hard and went outside to see what was going on and opened up my front door. And then, of course, that's when I saw how heavy the rain was. The tornado reportedly causing damage to a building on Gallatin Street several down trees and a down utility pole near Jackson State. Many thankful tonight they were safe and sound as they rode out the storm. Well, when you have a storm that comes in like this, you know, you certainly want to take precautions to make sure that you stay safe. 16 WAPT's Kara Peters live for us tonight in downtown Jackson. Kara, you spent most of the day there today. Uh, what are you seeing tonight? Well, I can tell you that tonight the intersection of West Street and Capitol Street is now open. We know that earlier as crews were working to clean up this massive tree here at the governor's mansion behind me, that was not the case. But I do want to show you what it looks like tonight from that damage. You can see that caution tape has been taped up. You can see some of the damage that I talked about earlier, those bricks and pieces of the security gate down. Now, again, thankfully, no injuries to report as people make their way through the metro tonight. Reporting live in downtown Jackson, Kara Peters, 16 WAPT News. Thank you, Kara. Yazoo County was hit with significant damage from the storms today. 16 WAPT's Michaela Franklin shows us what was left behind. Could have been a lot worse, you know, I'm just thankful God is good. Most of the damage hitting the town of Benton, one woman's metal roof peeled back from heavy gusts of wind, while her barn didn't hold up as well during the storm. It's odd, I'm just thankful nobody was hurt, you know. My animals were kind of scared, you know, they were all under the house, and but uh, other than that, it's nothing that can't be fixed. This isn't the first storm sweeping over Grace Ingram's home, but her barn and her roof have stuck with her for 15 years worth of storms and it finally caved in. They got it, they got it. It's nothing that can't be fixed though. The metal roof actually being put up by Ingram herself, along with a friend who passed away recently. She says looking at its resiliency makes her smile. You know, it kind of touched my heart when I seen it because I wish he was here that, you know, but he'll be here with us in spirit when we put it back on. In Benton, Michaela Franklin, 16, WAPT News. It was a close call for a Madison County woman during the storm. As 16 WAPT's Russ Adams reports tonight, she took shelter just moments after she heard the warning sirens. The woman who lives here tells us she could have been seriously hurt or killed when a large tree came crashing through her roof. I was working in the living room and the sirens went off and I went to the safe space under my stairwell and about the time I got sat down, um, I heard a really loud boom. That boom left a huge hole in the living room ceiling as water poured in onto the furniture and floor. The fire department came and tried to patch up, uh, put a, a tarp on the ceiling, and they got it most of the way up there and it's keeping some of the water out. The fallen tree also shattered part of the chimney. The Madison County EMA director tells us there were numerous reports of trees down, mostly in the northern part of Madison County. No reports of injuries. Reporting from Madison, Ross Adams, 16 WAPT News. A Rankin County residents also had a busy day dodging the wind, the rain, and fire as well. 16 WAPT Scott Simmons covered the storms there. A long day for Rankin County residents, many seeking shelter in the Rankin County safe room, built up with sand, some 250 mile an hour winds. Many residents hoping they would never see anything like that here. 
The high winds bringing down power lines outside of Brandon on Wade Patrick Road. The sparks from the power lines setting off a fast-moving blaze with dry conditions and a steady breeze fanning the flames. Well, in this case, the problem was the wind taking the uh, main power line down and sparking and starting fire in uh, uh, pine needles and then blowing it on in to the woods. It's continued wind, it's always a potential, right. to potential to get worse. And we had uh, two structures that were endangered, one below and one above. The rains that eventually arrived were a welcome help in controlling the fire. Hundreds of residents, in the meantime, huddled together in the Rankin County safe room. More than 350 people seeking shelter from a storm system in a storm shelter that was built to withstand 250 mile an hour winds. Many had seen storms before and wanted no part of this one. Fine, as long as you're um, safe and everything. Do you feel safe in places like this? Yes, we do. This is our second time here. We was here last Tuesday and we're here today. You just don't take any chances with storms? No chances, and I'm afraid of bad weather, so. The Forestry Service dispatched to help put down that fire on the outskirts of Rankin County, but luckily the rain helped do much of the work. An estimated crowd of some 350 residents seeking shelter here at the safe room in Brandon Luckily, most of them returning to homes that did not suffer any damage. In Brandon, Scott Simmons, 16, WAPT News.